Hey, Sam, come here for a sec. Coach, I'm, I'm sorry. You know what the happiest animal on earth is? It's a goldfish. You know why? No. Got a 10 second memory. Be a goldfish, Sam. Yeah? Folks, that was from a TV series, Ted Lasso, which I absolutely love. And it was an interaction between Ted, the coach, and Sam, one of the players. There's a quote I want to share. Love life. Engage in it. Give it all you've got. Love it with a passion because life truly does give back many times over what you put into it. This quote was by Maya Angelou. Folks, do you find it hard to find your passion? Is passion and purpose the same thing? These feel like pretty big questions. And I wonder if you find yourself asking these questions lately. There's an old quote I want to share. If you can tune into your purpose and really align with it, setting goals so that your vision is an expression of that purpose, then life flows much more easily. This quote was by Jack Canfield. Boy, I really resonate with Jack's quote. If you can truly align with your purpose, you start attracting your desired reality rather than feeling like you're chasing after it. The question of the century is, how? In today's episode, I'm going to share a framework I recently used in a retreat that can help you get one step closer on activating your passion. Let's cue the intro. Welcome to the Boom Vision Podcast, the show that empowers you to live an enriching life physically, mentally, and spiritually. I am your host, Benjamin Ye, and I created this podcast to give you perspectives on how to strengthen your mindset so that you can build optimal health, create aligned wealth, and connect with your higher self. It's all interconnected. Let's get to work. Hi, folks. Welcome to episode 60 of the Boom Vision Podcast. We've got quite a show for you today on how to activate your passion in life. Now, this is a big topic to unpack, so let's just dive right in. Earlier this month, I had the immense pleasure of facilitating part of a CEO retreat in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. In one segment of the workshop, we talked about what is your sun? What energizes you? and brings you joy and happiness. What is your passion? Now, it may feel like a giant leap of faith for you to discover what is your passions in life, but let me help break it down for you in smaller steps. My question I have for you is that, do you live in the paradigm that once I achieve X, then I'll be happy? Once I achieve that revenue goal, once I achieve that promotion, once I achieve that TEDx talk, whatever it is, do you live in that paradigm, in that core belief that once I achieve X, then I'll be happy? If you really think about it, it's really no different than, in Excel terms, circular reference error, because you're just chasing after milestone after milestone. So how do you go about navigating the question of finding your passion. If the entire world or universe is a playground where you can find your passion, where do you even start? It will probably help you to narrow down the playing field of what section in this world, in this sandbox, that brings you joy. And one way to do it is by eliminating the areas of what does not bring you joy. Because then by partitioning those sections off, you will help increase your chance of finding exactly what brings you joy. And so one of the exercises we did was this topic of your rhythm. What's your speed? What's your rhythm? You may have heard me share this analogy back in episode 58. But if your business or career was a vehicle, think of it in terms of a ship. Are you a rowboat, a yacht, or a speedboat. So what does that mean? A rowboat 
Do you feel in a current chapter of your life? Do you want to row in a boat by yourself at your own speed so that you can feel that sense of calmness and stillness so that you can actually have time and space to inner reflect? Because going at your own speed, at your own pace, you will be able to find inspiration in doing your best work. Does that speed and rhythm resonate with you? Or is it a yacht? Do you find that you love the rhythm of being on cruise control, enjoying a cruise with either family or friends or close ones in your inner circle on your yacht, enjoying the company, being at the present moment, enjoying that sunset where you really value the journey more than about getting to the destination? Does that speed or rhythm resonate with you? Or is it a speedboat? Do you feel you have that urge for need for speed? Do you want to go from point A to point B as fast as you can, as efficient as you can, because you love to continually just level up and you want people in your inner circle that go in the same pace, that go with that same speed? Now, keep in mind, there's no right or wrong answer here. This analogy is really to give you that self-reflection, a prompt for you to think about what do you truly authentically want? What speed and rhythm of life do you feel you resonate with the most? Because being in the right rhythm and speed can help reveal where can you bring you the most joy. There's a quote I want to share. When you do things from your soul, you feel a river moving in you, a joy. This quote was by Rumi. The reason why knowing what speed and what rhythm of life you enjoy is important is because you want to be able to surround yourself with the right people, the right business, the right partners that can resonate and vibrate in a similar frequency. Because if you surround yourself with people with different speeds, that might make you feel anxious. That might make you feel like you're being slowed down or too sped up in terms of outside your comfort zone. And so one of the exercises I did in the CEO retreat was that I first asked the group, which boat resonates with you the most in the current chapter of your life? Is it a rowboat? Is it a yacht? Or is it a speedboat? And based on their response, what I did was I divided them up into three different groups, depending on their answers. And then what we did was we played a game. And the game was called Marshmallow Tower, where I brought spaghetti strands, dry spaghetti strands, some marshmallows, and some tape. And so the name of the game was within a certain amount of period of time, how fast can your group build a structure just using spaghetti strands, marshmallow, and tape in terms of how high the tower can be. And the way we're going to measure it is whichever the highest marshmallow is in your structure, that will be measured as a high point. And so once we divvy up the team, the team robo and team yacht each got 12 minutes to build, whereas the speedboat team only got nine minutes. And it was so fun to just witness and see how the team interacted and played. And towards the end, we debriefed on what is it that you like the most, what worked, what doesn't. But the very last question I asked him was this. Do you feel the category of the rhythm you selected? Is that in alignment with where you have the most fun? Did this experience amplify a part of you that you already know? Or did it reveal a part of you that you didn't know about yourself? Because that's the thing. Sometimes we think it's one certain way, but until we experience it, that's when we truly know. I mean, for example, you can read hundreds of books on how to do a push-up, but until you get down on the floor and do your first push-up, you won't know how it feels. And that's the key word, feel. The thing about passion is that I haven't met anyone with a passion that they hate. I'll say that again. I haven't met anyone with a passion that they hate. 
the person I meet when they talk about their passion or passions is that they speak about it so passionately. They love it. They feel so much joy when they get to talk about their passions and when they're experiencing it. The feeling they feel when they're doing their passion is of abundant amount of joy and happiness. So if you don't know what your passion is yet, then let's just narrow down the playing field of what doesn't bring you joy to a more refined playing field of what can bring you joy. And part of that process is understanding what's your speed and rhythm of life that you resonate with. This is the main intention of why I shared that marshmallow tower exercise. What is your sun? The sun is what brings your soul joy and lights you up. Now, here's a pro tip. If you're currently feeling stuck, if you currently feel like you're in this funk and you don't know how to get out of it, do what I call a circuit breaker. So let me share a quick side story. My dog, Honey, yesterday, when it was middle of the day and I was working in the kitchen island, for some reason, she just snuck up right next to my foot and just laid down on the floor. And it wasn't until a few minutes into it that I noticed, because my legs would brush up against her body, that her whole body was, was starting to shiver. And I was like, honey, what's going on? And I can see that she got spooked by some things. Like she was just really scared and her body was starting to shake. I was like, honey, it's okay. I'm right here. So there's nothing wrong in the house. But it was very clear that she was spooked. And so in order for me to help her snap out of it, I was like, okay, I got to do a circuit breaker here. So what I did was like, all right, honey, let's just go for a walk. I mean, I was in the middle of work, but I knew she was in distress. So I just said, hey, honey, let's put on your leash and let's go outside. And so I just took her a walk around the block. And in doing that, just in being in nature, just taking for a quick walk, she's getting different senses. She wasn't spooked anymore. Her body wasn't shivering and she was naturally back in her normal self. And so the takeaway I want to share in that story is that what is your circuit breaker that you can use for yourself when you get into that moment of feeling stuck, when you're in that funk? And some of the ways that I do, some of the circuit breakers that I use is I just take a pause, I get up, and I take a small walk in the nature. I go around the block, I take off my shoes, and I have my bare feet feel the grass in my front lawn, at a nearby park, whatever it takes for you to take a break from your normal day-to-day cycle. The key is when you feel stuck is how can you get your energy to start flowing in your mind, in your body. And the last story I want to share also involves my dog, Honey. And this happened in dinner a few couple days ago. Normally what we do as a family is that we sit down and eat uh, dinner together. And once we finish dinner, that's when we feed our dog. And so towards the end of dinner, I got the food for Honey. And because it was a long day for both me and my wife and the kids, you know, I just said, hey, Honey, okay, you can go eat. And usually the word okay is her release word to go eat. But what was really odd was that she just laid there and just looked at us. She didn't move. And so I looked at my wife. (laughs) I was like, that's kind of odd. Like, honey, okay, you can eat. She didn't move. And then my wife chimed in. Honey, okay. Both my kids chimed in. Honey, okay, you can go eat. She didn't move. Now, at first I was thinking, oh man, do I need to take her to the vet? (laughs) Because there's one thing you have to know about honey. Every dog has one thing they value the most out of three things. Either they're very, very motivated by food, by play, or by words of affirmation. Usually, most dogs are highly motivated by one of those things, if not a combination of them. And for my dog, it's food. Her absolute joy in life is to eat. And so when we release her, And she's not moving. 
my wife and I are looking at each other and it's like, oh my God, is something wrong with her? Because eating is her absolute joy in life. And she's sitting still looking at us. Then this thought came to mind. I was like, does she need to work for it? Because up until, you know, what we usually do, our normal routine is that whenever we feed our dog honey, we have her sit, we have her do heal, we do a couple of commands to basically help her really solidify the, the commands that we have, like sit, down, things like things of that nature. But this time, all we did, we just told her, look, and then you can eat, go eat. But she didn't move. And so what I did was I got up, I said, honey, heel, down, look, touch. Okay. Then she got up and she went to go eat. And so I was looking at my wife and we were like, whoa. My wife was like, wow. Her programming was so embedded. She was so wired that she needed to work before she actually goes to eat her meal. And it made us pause and reflect because I was talking to my wife and it's like, wow, whatever programming we have consciously and subconsciously, like what is your core belief? Do you feel you need to work hard in order for you to deserve the joys of your life? If you were handed a big opportunity or a blessing, do you have programming, whether it's conscious or subconscious, do you have programming that allows you to accept opportunities and blessings that come into your life with both arms wide open? Or do you have a belief that you might not deserve it and subconsciously reject any opportunities coming your way unless you work really hard for it? Can you imagine in living in a world where joy and happiness flows easily into your life? Do you give yourself the space and grace for that possibility to exist? I want you to just think about that. Because the main takeaway from today's episode is how do you reveal the joys and passions in your life? And I choose my words carefully. I say reveal rather than find. Because finding something feels it's anchored towards this feeling of it being lost. And if you feel lost, you're going to attract more of that lost feeling. The words reveal, for me, just sounds so much more playful. It's like you get to discover. You get to discover about something about yourself. It feels just a higher vibration. For you to feel passion, you need to feel joy. So what are other things in your life that you're doing that brings you joy? Do you give yourself to permission to feel joy? Or do you have a programming that you don't deserve it unless you work hard for it? So with that said, what are this week's action steps that you can take to reveal the joys and passions of your life. I want you to use the CAL method, the C-A-L method. C stands for calm. Calm yourself in a way that works best for you. Is it meditation? Is it a simple breathing exercise? Do you want to go for a walk or run around a block? Quiet that wind tunnel. Find whatever way that resonates for you. And then A stands for awareness. In your calm state, bring awareness to your body and mind and how you feel. The awareness I want you to bring is what makes you feel good in the present moment. Ask yourself, what brings me joy? What brings the passionate side in me out? What activates it? And see what comes up for you. The L stands for language. I want you to pay attention to the thoughts and the language that you use that are going through your mind. What language do you use when you ask yourself the questions, do you prioritize self-care in your life? Or is self-care a low priority after you serve everyone else? What response comes to you? 
Ask yourself the question, do you seek joy and laughter in life? Or are you just solely focused on finding solutions? Do you allow yourself the permission and space to play and explore the endless possibilities in your world on what can bring you happiness and joy? Or is the language you use, once I achieve X, then I'll be happy? Because here's the thing. The more you are in alignment with the energy of joy in your present moment, the easier it is for you to reveal your passion. So final thoughts for today's episode. There's a quote I want to share. The purpose of dancing isn't to end up at a particular spot on the floor. The purpose of dancing and of life is to enjoy every moment and every step, regardless of where you are when the music ends. This quote was by Wayne Dyer. Do you resonate with this quote? I want to share something with you. My daughter the other day was playing in the backyard and she was hitting this plastic bottle because she was trying to get this cork that was stuck on the top. And so because she was banging on this table, I actually stepped outside of my office and went to the backyard. And when I went outside, I asked my daughter if she needed help. Now, normally, I would try to solve her problem because I was in the middle of my work. But because I just facilitated this phenomenal retreat, my intuition was telling me to do something different. So what I did differently was I asked myself, how can this be fun? So you know what I did? I asked my daughter if I can help her. And when she handed me the bottle, what I did was I started hopping up and down and spinning myself around like in a 360. And I was asking my daughter to do the same thing. And so when she was hopping and turning around, just like I was, as I was trying to fix this bottle, she started giggling. And I kept turning and spinning until I finally got the cork off the top of the bottle and I handed it to her. But as I was listening to her giggle and I saw her smile, it just brought me so much joy as a dad. Why I'm sharing this story with you is because I want to tell you something. My natural autopilot programming is to create a solution and move on to the next one. Making something fun is not a natural way that I operate. But when I have this awareness, when I start asking different questions, I arrive to different answers and I I start changing my reality. So the one question I want to bring to my forefront now is how can I solve this problem and have fun doing it? Because when you start prioritizing joy in your life magic happens and you start shifting your reality you've got this i love to hear your thoughts send me a dm on instagram at benjamin yay i love to hear if this resonates with you and if you enjoyed today's episode i encourage you to rate and review this show on apple podcasts so that other people can find this show as a resource to help them start thriving in their life in the famous words of ted lasso be a goldfish until next time folks be kind to yourself be in the light be you thank you so much for tuning in to my boom vision podcast if you'd like to find out more about me in this podcast head over to benjaminyay.com that's spelled b-e-n-j-a M-I-N-Y-E-H dot com. If you haven't already, click subscribe and I'll catch you next time.